Retrieved from the Memory Hole by Humongous. Quote, War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Unquote. 1984. How does one wage war in the name of peace? It's known as doublethink, and George Orwell, author of the book 1984, described it as, quote, the power of holding two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accepting both of them. To tell deliberate lies while genuinely believing in them. To forget any fact that has become inconvenient and then when it becomes convenient again, to draw it back from the oblivion for just as long as it is needed, to deny the existence of objective reality and all the while to take account of the reality which one denies. All this is indispensably necessary. In using the word doublethink, it is necessary to exercise doublethink. For by using the word, one admits that one is tampering with reality. By a fresh act of doublethink, one erases this knowledge, and so on indefinitely, with the lie always one leap ahead of the truth. Unquote. George Orwell, 1984. It's one thing to lie. As stated in my previous works, believing one's own fallacious fabrications, however, locks you in an entirely new rubber room. You're actually fibbing so convincingly you've deceived yourself. In the pursuit of friendship, harmony, and love, all of which are synonyms of the word peace, you murder other human beings? Unless you're one dumb shit motherfucker with your brains on the full spin cycle, you can see through this obvious fabrication. Politicians lie to us constantly, perpetually employing doublethink. Look no further than Bill Clinton's predication concerning Monica Lewinsky, Barry Obama's promise to repeal the Patriot Act, or demented Daddy Bush's assertion regarding, quote, no new taxes, unquote. Not only was it forensically proven Billy Boy dumped a load of cum on his former aide's dress, but Obi-Wan didn't eradicate the act in question. Instead, he continued it and old man Bush introduced a whole slew of extortion mandates. Those you vote for and thus voluntarily place in positions of quote-unquote power constantly promise one thing on the campaign trail and deliver nothing of the sort once elected. We're brainwashed to believe doctors exist to cure us, but when we stop and look at the situation rationally, doctors would be out of business if the population was healthy. Hence, as I've stated so many times before, doctors not only have a vested interest in keeping us sick, but making us so. Quote, One of the first duties of the physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. Unquote. William Osler, Physician. Consider the catalyst of lawyers. It isn't to serve justice but to serve injustice. Again, if justice was being practiced ubiquitously, lawyers would be monetarily broke. Thus, lawyers, akin to doctors, have financial impetus in perpetuating wrongdoing. More justice only means smaller paychecks for them. Ponder the incentive of colleges, schools, and universities. Their motivation has nothing to do with education, but rather the promotion of ignorance. Look up the word quote-unquote school at thesaurus.com. One of the primary synonyms listed is the term jail. These institutions have pecuniary incentive in keeping people ignorant instead of making them well-informed. If the masses were sapient, they'd realize they've never had a need for schools. Since it doesn't behoove a person to lock himself in a prison, as a result, it financially benefits these establishments to keep the populace as oblivious to reality as possible. 
Stop referring to the monetarily abundant as the quote-unquote elite, since they're everything but. There's nothing superlative about them. Their sole attribute is the ability to collect useless pieces of paper called cash and thereby slaughter their own species, which includes the annihilation of themselves. How the fuck is that elite? They're obviously nothing more than inbred to the point they can no longer think rationally, if they ever could. We control them, but instead we're allowing the opposite to occur. They've indoctrinated us into believing they're remarkable, but as proven via doublespeak and doublethink, they simply lie, telling us the opposite of the truth. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Inferior is elite. I'd refer to them as the quote-unquote inferiors from this point forth, but that would result in the same problem we're currently encountering. By erroneously believing some are inferior while others are superior, you create a hierarchy. In the context of that system, you assign authority to those deemed superlative. As such, you circuitously return to the quagmire in which we presently find ourselves. None are inferior, and none superior. We are all equal, because we are all one. Since we are all one, it's impossible to have inferiors and superiors. Deeming one of us superior would, by effect, cause us all to be superior. The ideology of stature is a fallacy. Religion and spirituality are often promoted as one and the same. In reality, nothing could be further from the truth. As I've previously beseeched, look up the term religion in most online thesauruses, and you'll find the word cult is one of the first synonyms listed. If that weren't tenuous enough a foundation, spirituality is defined as immaterial or incorporeal, hence something beyond physicality. Yet, all these major religions are drowning in the materialistic. They've more money than most quote-unquote countries. Those immense ornate churches and mosques aren't built for free. You don't print up billions of copies of the most widely sold book ever, the Bible, without a fuckload of cash. The Pope and his archbishops ain't globetrotting hourly on prayers. And let's not forget the minor religions, who simply haven't been as successful or around long enough to fleece the masses the way the major ones have. All these quote-unquote sacramental con games are flaunting the physical riches they've accumulated, even though they're supposed to be about the asomatous. The masses pretend to believe the lies because they want that quote-unquote safety net once this shitstorm concludes and we depart our physical forms. Quote, Don't you see that the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought? Unquote. 1984. In the book 1984, it was referred to as Newspeak, the creation of an entirely new lexicon based upon as few words as possible. If a populace doesn't have a term for something, be it a concept or an idea, they're more apt to not think of it. As a result, their scope is limited, and they become dumbed down. Quote, Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word, with its meaning rigidly defined, and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. Every year, fewer and fewer words, and the range of consciousness always a little smaller. Unquote. 1984. A good portion of newspeak is doublespeak, telling the masses the opposite of the truth. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Quote, reality control, they called it in newspeak, doublethink. 
to know and not to know, to be conscious of complete truthfulness while telling carefully constructed lies, to hold simultaneously two opinions which canceled out knowing them to be contradictory and believing in them both, to use logic against logic, to repudiate morality while laying claim to it, to believe that democracy was impossible and that the party was the guardian of democracy. Even to understand the word doublethink involved the use of doublethink. Unquote. 1984. Authority lies to us perpetually. They continually tell us that which isn't is. Since we're dealing in opposites, let's shed some light on the truth, using common terms and what they really mean. Economy, a fictional concept that isn't real and isn't necessary, a means by which authority can control the populace. Elite, delusional inbred psychotics hell-bent on controlling everything. The only thing these retarded entities excel at is collecting inherently useless pieces of paper known as cash. Employee. Slave. Employee of the month. Slave of the month. Employee of the year. Slave of the year. Land of the free. Land of the enslaved. Laws. Threats. Lawyer. A traitor to his or her own species. Somebody who has sold their soul in order to protect the psychotics who call themselves the quote-unquote elite. Manager. Most immediate slave master. Political promises. Lies. Politics. Bread and circuses for the masses, this nonsense doesn't even exist. Politics is subterfuge to keep you distracted so you won't discover the truth that we're all slaves. Who the fuck is Manafort? The same as Scaramucci. Just some shit slime who crawled out of the sewer when the system called upon him to perpetuate this soap opera of nothingness. Those who embroil themselves in politics, study them, and talk about them are idiots. Religion. Cargo cult. Yet another means by which authority can control the populace. Soldier. Compensated murderer. Contract mercenary. Hired killer. Paid assassin. Taxes. Extortion. Thievery. Work. Slavery. Whomever controls language controls thought. As Orwell asserted, we think in the terminology in which we communicate. If our vocabulary is greatly diminished, then our thoughts are as well. Without a commodious glossary, we only envision in myopic manner. This produces a society with a radically reduced level of intelligence. A populace unable to think on a larger scope is more ignorant and thus more easily controlled. Quote, In reality, very little was known about the proles, i.e. the proletarian. So long as they continued to work and breed, their other activities were without importance. They were born, they grew up in the gutters, they went to work at twelve, they passed through a brief blossoming period of beauty and sexual desire, they married at twenty, they were middle-aged at thirty, they died for the most part at sixty. Heavy physical work, the care of home and children, petty quarrels with neighbors, films, football, beer, and above all, gambling, filled up the horizon of their minds. To keep them in control was not difficult. All that was required of them was a primitive patriotism which could be appealed to whenever it was necessary to make them accept longer working hours or shorter rations. 
And even when they became discontented, as they sometimes did, their discontent led nowhere, because being without general ideas, they could only focus it on petty specific grievances. The larger evils invariably escaped their notice. Unquote. George Orwell, 1984. Why are cats, cows, and dogs subservient to humans? Because Homo sapiens ruminate at a higher level than these other animals. These three types of creatures don't think the thoughts we do. As a result, we can wield quote unquote power over them if we choose. Strength comes in choosing not to brandish power over those you can control. You're confident in your abilities, but knowledgeable in the understanding we are all one. Pursuing the opposite path leads down a one-way road of deceit, lies, and eventual vaporization. <laughs>